Okay, friends. So let's look at how we can use the number line to add. We might even use it to subtract today. Um, first, I'm going to tell you a story problem. I'm going to read the problem, and then we're going to use the number line to add. Cynthia had eight model cars. That just means eight little toy cars. She got three more model cars. So how many does she have now? Well, think about where to start. What was the first number? She started with eight. So you can take and start at eight. I might even circle it. And how many more did she get? Three more. So I'm going to count up three. One, two, three. Where do I land? 11. Watch how I do that in my head. Eight, nine, 10, 11. So the counting of the hops was on my fingers, but I counted on from eight, nine, 10, 11. It's almost like the number line is getting into my head and I don't have to actually look at the number line because it's right here. Your goal is to get it from a number line to your brain without needing the number line. But we're gonna start here because that's what's gonna help you become more fluent with your adding. Let's try another one. Um, well, what would the number, let's talk about the number sentence though. We would say eight plus three equals 11. Okay, so let's try this one. Six plus four. We start at six. We count up four. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I counted up four and I landed at ten. Do you notice how the number line and my counting on with my words are matching? So I counted up four and made four hops on the number line started at six, counted up four, and he landed on 10. When I counted with my words in my brain, I said six, seven, eight, nine, 10. These fingers are like counting each hop on the number line. Okay. Now let's think about this. If I have a problem that says two plus nine, would it make, would it be faster or more efficient if I said two and I started at two and I count up from two? Let's try that. So I'm going to say two and I'm going to count up nine more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And where did I land? Oops, I landed on 11. Now, what, how can I do that problem faster but still get it correct? What if I start at nine instead because I've already, I don't want to have to sit and count nine hops. Could I flip flop it and do a turnaround and just count two hops? Let's try that. Start at nine and count two. Nine, 10, 11. Wow, I got the same answer, but that was so much faster. Friends, when you're starting with a little number and you have to add a bigger number, like two and nine, two is a small number, nine is a really a bigger number, it's better to just, it's more efficient if you flip them around and say nine, 10, 11. You're going to get the same answer, but it's a lot faster, okay? And we call that efficient. That's why I love that turnaround rule. It's good to know that I can change those numbers around and add them together, and it's still going to give me the right answer. Doesn't work that way with subtraction, though, so be careful that you're only doing that with adding. Now think about how this story is different. Allie bought a carton of 12 eggs at the store. Okay, so what did she do? She bought 12 eggs, okay. So I'm going to keep that number 12 in my head. I might even circle it on the number line because that's where I'm going to start. She bought 12 eggs at the store. On his way home, he dropped the carton. 
Is there a number in that sentence? No, but listen carefully. Three eggs broke. Hmm, three eggs broke. So I had 12, but three eggs broke. How many eggs did not break? So we've got this big group of 12 eggs. Three of them broke. How many did not break? We need to think about what's left. We're going to use the number line to subtract because we have 12, but we're losing three of them, right? I'm going to count backwards. That means I'm going to go left. I'm going to go before 12. So 12, let's count back three. One, two, three. See how I went backwards on the number line? Or if I was counting in my head, I would say 12. I'm still going to keep track of three hops, but this time I'm counting backwards. 12, 11, 10, 9. Hmm. 12 minus 3 equals, where did I land? 9. 9 eggs are not broken. And if you look at these numbers, friends, and I was, if, let's say I draw a number bond. 12 was the big group that we started with. So that would be in the big circle. Three of them broke. So that means if I have 12 eggs and three of them are broken, then nine of them are not broken. There's that number bond. Guess what? 12 minus three equals nine. 12 minus nine equals three. Guess what? Three plus nine equals 12. Nine plus three equals 12. Those numbers are connected. And that's why those number bonds help us to keep track of the adding and subtracting that we do. Let's try one more before I let you practice on your own. We're, these are both subtraction again. So start at nine. It says nine minus two. Well, I can count backwards, but if you use a number line, it looks like this. Start at nine. Count back two. Eight. Seven. Oh, that was two. What's nine minus two? Seven. Let's try 11 minus eight. We're starting at 11. Now, friends, there are two things you could do here. One way is more efficient, but there are two strategies you could use. You could start at 11 and take eight hops backwards or count back eight in your head. Or you could start at 11 and count back until you get to eight. Okay, so watch what I mean. I could say 11, 10, 9, 8. 11, 10, 9, 8. That was three hops to get from 11 to 8. If I counted back 8, I could go 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. That's eight hops. I landed at three. I still got the answer of three. But the first way I did it was much faster. It's less counting. 11, 10, 9, 8. Hmm. The answer is, did you say three? If you did, you are correct. Friends, now it's your turn. You practice using the number line to add and subtract. And if you've got that, then practice just counting in your head and counting on um, or counting back. Okay? But whatever you do, do your best.